85-year-old man is hospitalized for community-acquired pneumonia. He is treated with penicillin, and over the next week he feels that he is slowly recovering. On hospital day 10, he develops a low-grade fever, watery diarrhea, and low abdominal pain. What is the most likely diagnosis? Antibiotic-associated colitis, or pseudomembranous colitis caused by Clostridium difficile, superinfection, or overgrowth. C. difficile is a gram-positive spore-forming anaerobe. So remember that it's gram-positive and that it's a spore-forming anaerobe. It should be noted that most antibiotic-associated diarrhea without fever is osmotic, resulting from decreased carbohydrate digestion secondary to a loss of gut flora. However, C. difficile infection will present with fever and leukocytosis and can be very serious complication of prolonged antibiotic use. One of the manifestations of this condition, approximately 20% of hospitalized patients are asymptomatically colonized with C. difficile and then become carriers. Patients with symptoms upon colonization usually present with a low-grade fever, watery diarrhea, lower abdominal pain, leukocytosis, and a recent history within 10 weeks of antibiotic use. In severe cases, inflammation of the peritoneum can result from micro perforation of the diseased colon. These patients present with signs of peritonitis such as rebound tenderness and involuntary guarding. On colonoscopy, they uh, likely have pseudomembranes on the colon, which are raised yellow-white plaques created by C. difficile toxins. Risks include ileus and toxic megacolon, which can grossly perforate and cause death. Emergent colectomy is indicated and can be a life-saving procedure if performed in a timely manner. So the yellowish pseudomembranes in the colon, representing pseudomembranous colitis caused by Clostridium difficile infection. I don't know if we can see it on here. Anyway. What population of patients is susceptible to this condition? Infection is most often seen in elderly hospitalized patients. C. difficile produces resistant spores which are commonly found on hospital objects and on the hands of healthcare workers. Common alcohol-based hand sanitizers are ineffective at eliminating C. difficile spores. C. difficile colonizes the gastrointestinal tract, usually the colon, after the normal gut flora is killed or altered by antibiotics. The antibiotics most commonly associated with this disease are the penicillins, cephalosporins, and clindamycin. Once it is colonized this GI tract, C. difficile releases toxins, toxins A and B, that permeate and destroy intestinal epithelial cells respectively. A new, more virulent strain of this bacterium that produces a binary toxin is associated with the use of fluoroquinolones. How is this condition diagnosed and treated? Definitive diagnosis can be made with a cytotoxicity assay, an enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay for C. difficile toxin A or polymerase chain reaction. First line treatment is with oral metronidazole or vancomycin. Fecal transplantation is an emerging therapy that aims to replenish the missing gut flora in patients with C. difficile overgrowth by introducing normal fecal bacteria from a healthy patient. Pilot studies reveal a high success rate of this procedure, but further testing is needed before it becomes standard of care.